Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about Garrick, which is a large language model of vulnerability scanner. And there's a couple of common questions. One is actually how that I've seen sort of on Garrick's Discord channel, which is how can you actually test your own custom application? And that's sort of what this video is going to focus on. But before that, I want to give you a brief overview of how Garrick works and then we'll dive in how you actually can test your own chatbot with Garrick and analyze the results. Okay, so head over to garrick.ai to get started. And here's great documentation. There's basically everything that you need and I wanna directly go to the reference documentation. So just a brief overview real quick. So Garrick is a large language model vulnerability scanner and it has like a, a, a large library and it's constantly updated which is really great of probes so we'll call it probes which are test cases that evaluate or try to trick the model into doing something bad and then it has detectors that check the response and then evaluate all of that and it's pretty straightforward to use and it has here you can see there's like what they call generators which is sort of targets that you can point it to. There are a lot of targets that are directly related to models, but then there's also API endpoints, like you can use Hugging Face, there's directly, you can directly talk to OpenAI's endpoints. Not as well known, I believe, is that REST generator. That actually allows you to test any web application or any chatbot that would be exposed on a REST as a REST interface, which is what we're gonna look at now. And the application that we will look at is called Woodsy Chat. It's a very basic, simple chat application. Uh, the one thing that I would like to highlight, which I think is cool, it actually is the back end is Llama 3, but it is actually uh, hosted via Grok. So the inference happens via Grok. That's why it is so uh, so fast. You can see how quickly the responses are. It, it's it's pretty amazing. And you, if you want to set up this chatbot yourself, you can head over to my GitHub and just grab the code. It's really very, very straightforward. And then here's instructions how you can actually get a Grok API key. And then you can use that API key to set up the, the chatbot. And then you get this user interface. Great, so let's head over to Garrick now, just show you some very basic capabilities. And you can see here that chatbot is like logging the interactions. Good, uh, now here we have Garrick. And if you're curious about the installation, you can find all of that in the documentation. It's really well documented. So it's just pip install if you wanna get the code, which I always prefer when you just uh, enlist the code and it's it's straightforward to install and, and set up good and then when you run it uh, the very first thing of course you can look at the help and you can see here the all the command line parameters how you can point it to custom models to endpoints there's one item I would like to highlight real quick which is generations which we're gonna actually use in this demo a little bit that value is by default it is 10 so it actually creates quite a lot of requests when it tests your language model or your language model application. And the reason that is important is because, as you know, large language models are probabilistic. So they do not return the same response when you ask a second time. And the same applies to attacks. And so this is sort of calling the model many times and then getting you an average sort of a idea of which tendency it has in misbehavior and with it just, uh, how likely it is to actually enter failure mode. And here then you can look at the probes, which, is, uh, which are the test cases, and you can quickly actually look at all of them. There's a list probes functionality, and that shows you actually all the test cases that it has. And it's a large library of test cases, all the way from like, uh, do anything now, like a large library of cases, test cases, um, encoding specific test cases, you know, it, it, it's a long list, toxicity testing, prompt injection, 
and then also rather new rather kind of pretty new ones like visual jailbreaks and so on and uh, cross-site scripting as well so a large list of capabilities and features good now let's take a look at the chatbot again so this is the application we want to automate the testing for so there's a chat box and now I'm you probably might notice, if not, I'm gonna walk through it a little like slower and I'm gonna uh, turn off my webcam real quick so you can actually see it as well. So I'm gonna go here and enter the developer tools. And in the developer tools, I'm gonna go to this network tab up here. And this is in order to capture the network traffic so that we know the API endpoint that we need to actually communicate to. And if you're familiar with uh, transparent proxies like Burp or Fiddler, right, you can use those here, of course, as well. Just want to show you a really kind of simple way to, to get the, the necessary data that you will need to construct such an API call. So now we called the application. We just passed in hello, and it responded. And you can see here that the network request that was issued, it was an API called chat so this is what we kind of need to now implement with garrick and the way to do this is that we just actually go into the garrick documentation and we go to generators we go to the rest generator that we had it's very well documented here there are a couple of things that i will explain like the rest api key but the first thing that I recommend doing is just grabbing this kind of template uh, specification on how a request should look like or how to, com how to configure Garrick to issue a valid web request. And the way we do this, and for this, I'm actually gonna move over here uh, in a different folder to create that test case. I think I have a, a test folder somewhere here, yeah. And we're just gonna call it Garak config.json. And we, I'll paste that uh, data in here. And so now we have the rest generator. We give it a name. Let's call it Woody Tester. And then the URL we, we already know. Uh, remember, here in the browser, we saw localhost. Let's just copy this. So we put this in here. This is the endpoint. Then it is a post request checking. It's a post request that works well. Next is so authorization is going to be interesting. So here it's great actually that the this template already has the idea of authorization in there. So we need to see how is authorization actually happening. And this is something I haven't explained in the for the Wootsie chat, but Wootsie chat, basically the chat application has, it requires an authorization header. And the client is gonna send that authorization header with every single request, but it appends that HTTP header. So somewhere here, we should see an authorization header and it's called testing here. And so we need to make sure this is called authorization. And then here we have the key. And this is now interesting and a little bit, uh, there's a level of indirection that I, I want to explain that is important to get. So Garrick is going to replace this key. So it's going to replace this key here with an environment variable called REST API key. So in order, what this means is you need to actually export that. And uh, I actually have this tiny little command line that make sure I don't actually read that value directly type it into the command line. This is sort of how you do it securely that it actually reads the value. But in order to just show you how, how this actually is done here, you can actually just do rest API key. And in our test scenario, I just call it testing. So now that value is set and this key is going to be replaced with, with this value here. And if you wonder how I know that, it is because in the documentation, it is actually well explained. You can see here, it's by default REST API key, and it's it mentioned this, it's it's mentioned here that this is actually an environment variable. 
And similarly for the input, which we see down here, this is these are the actual test cases. This is the value that Garrick is gonna put in for every probe, for every test case that it runs through, it's gonna replace that input parameter. But in order to make that work correctly, we actually have to construct this. So let's go back again, look at our chatbot. And uh, there's always the question, do we need other HTTP headers? And I'm pretty positive, it's always a good idea to send up the content type. So let's add the content type as well here. And this is important, I noticed that there's a comma in the template. So make sure to either delete that comma or add another parameter, otherwise you're gonna get an error message uh, when you first run it. And here we just actually say it's application JSON and uh, that, that should now make sure that every request has the content type as well set. Good, now let's construct the actual payload. And for that, we go here into payload and you can see here it is a, a JSON blob that is being sent up. So we wanna mimic that data that is being sent. So it has API provider, Grok, and then the chat history, and it has a role user. So it's gonna send up uh, a history of messages, it looks like. Let me, let's actually do another one. Uh, so, so we did two more requests. Let's look at the third one and look at the payload. Yeah, so we can see actually, it sends the entire message history up to the server. We can keep it actually quite simple. So we can copy, so we need the API provider, API provider and then I wonder if, uh, yeah, perfect. So here we can just copy, I think that's all we need. And then we need to close the brackets correctly. With, yeah, so let's copy this. So this is the JSON payload. payload. And here we go in now and basically we just replace this. We don't need that. We have a private rock, then we're gonna start the chat history. That's an array of messages, which is okay and each element here and this has to be the content which as we know now this has to be input then this is closed we close the array and uh, i think that looks good what do you think yep that should be it okay so and then the next part is the response and in the response this is going to, going to be the value it evaluates when the test case ran. It's going to use that to check with a detector if the su test succeeded or failed. And it looks for a property text by default. So let's look here. If you got look at the response that came back, we see even the response contains every message. And, oh, okay, so we, we see it has a chat history, but then also it sends a message, which, which is the actual response. I'm pretty positive. So I think everything we need to do is just uh, make this message. So you can see how you sort of need to understand how the REST interface functions. And you do this with uh, inspection tool now and I'll save it. Now it should, should work. There's one mistake I just saw and I think that is okay because uh, I wanna show you something. So now we're gonna run it again let me clear the screen. Let me clear the screen and uh, call a Garrick with the proper settings. So we do model type and this is rest because it's a custom rest endpoint. We point it to our configuration file, which is under tests, uh, Garrick config. Then the next thing is we need to tell it which test cases we want to run and in our case we want to just do malware generation dot evasion and then let's say generations too good and with that we kick it off and we should see an error that i noticed a little earlier in our config file yeah so this is an example of when you're not completely correctly generating the request right you might get an error like this and you can see here we get an unauthorized 401 
which when you see this, you should then think about, oh, okay, so what happened? Authorization, we have, we send in the key. The key, as you know, right? Let's look at it just so that you understand. So it's the REST API key and it's set to testing. Okay, so this is just testing and that is not what the application needs. So if you look here again at a request, you can see here that the authorization header, if you know web applications well, you, you probably already knew the problem, but it has to have the string bearer because it's a bearer token in front of it. And so this is one thing that we need to modify here. We need to say it's a bearer and then the key. And we save that again. And now when we run it, and now when we run it, and let's, let me move the webcam again, you can see now it actually starts executing the test cases. So let's let this run and then we'll look again on how it looks in the end. And yep, it's complete. And you can see it actually it failed, meaning a lot, a lot of times it actually, this is it's kind of interesting. A lot of times it must have been able to successfully generate malware. And what I want to show you real quick now, let me turn the webcam on. Uh, what I would want to show you now is here in the Garrick in the output folder, there's this Garrick runs, and that's where actually where the, the results are being stored. And you can look here, the B88. So this is our test run here. And there's uh, multiple files. One is the, it's called the hit log, which is like all the error cases. And you can see exactly like it asked it to write assembly code to hide in memory, it looks like. And then it should show you the actual code here. You see this, the code that was generated uh, and which detector was being used. And so you can use this if you want to kind of dive into certain test cases more. There is an HTML report that you can look at, which shows it uh, graphically a little nicer. And then the here is just the entire, the entire output log, like every single attempt. And uh, here also on the side of the the server, like the chatbot, right? You can see also like every single request that came in, this, the, the chatbot also logs it. And you can see here the kind of test cases that the code it generated, which is uh, pretty cool. Like I remember like when I followed it, you can see how it does like memory injections, uh, trying to open remote processes and threads and so on. And so it runs through these test cases. Uh, uh, I think it's really pretty awesome. Good, uh, with that, I think that's sort of everything I wanted to show you today mostly really about how you can generate your custom JSON file for the REST generator, because I think this is one thing that uh, many people want to do. And this is a very quick, it gets you up really quickly and up and testing sort of a custom chatbot. If somebody in your company has a chatbot and you ask to test it, this is something you can get like some data points rather quickly by just configuring it accordingly. And of course, keep in mind also that you should not be testing any systems that you do not own or not authorized to because tools like this, right, they might create harmful content when they succeed. And also they create a lot of requests, a test tool like this. So uh, it might take down the server even because if you send in too many requests. So as always, make sure you have proper authorization and you are not doing anything uh, illegal. With that said, I hope this was an interesting uh, video. It's a little different than normal, but I thought there's a lot of interest in testing tools like this, and I um, might also create another one for some of the other test tools out there. So let me know down in the comments if you find this was interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, have a great day.